Saturday, it's the exciting new Plymouth. Right now, it's the Harold Perry Show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yes, friends, Saturday is the big day, the day the thrilling new Plymouth comes to town. New beauty, you bet, from any angle. Outside, sweeping long lines. Inside, new styling, smart tailoring, and color harmony. And talk about performance. Man, there's never been anything like it. But literally, because Saturday, Plymouth introduces Safety Flow Ride. Not just a minor improvement you might expect on any new model, but a spectacular engineering development. Plymouth Safety Flow Ride means that now you get a smooth ride on all kinds of roads. Yes, even the roughest, bumpiest roads you know. It's a brand new riding sensation you've got to experience to believe. So come on in Saturday to your nearby Plymouth dealers and arrange for a demonstration ride. Remember, Saturday's the day, Plymouth's the car. And now, Harold Perry as Honest Harold, the homemaker. Well, let's look in on the little town of Melrose Springs, home of that popular radio entertainer, Honest Harold the Homemaker. This is Harold's week to broadcast the 6 a.m. weather reports, and for the second morning in a row, he has overslept. It is now 9 a.m., and we find our worried weather reporter plodding along on his way to the radio station. <sighs> what a horrible day. Looks like it was up all night. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what my dear boss, Stanley Peabody, will say. Yesterday, he threatened to fire me if I miss broadcasting the weather again. Who listens to weather reports at 6 o'clock in the morning? Just the chickens. They don't need the radio to tell them it's cold. I'd know enough to go in the coop if I had snow on my tail feathers. Good morning, radio station KJP. Good morning, Glory. Oh. Good morning, Harold. Mr. Peabody wants to see you in his office right away. Hmm. Maybe he's going to fire me. Uh, Gloria, how is Stanley this morning? Is he in a good mood? Well, when I saw him, he looked sour. Sour? Yes, he was drinking his yogurt. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, that was a little joke. It, it certainly was. <laughs> see you later, Gloria, I hope. I'm not afraid of Stanley. Just let him try to fire me. I'll show that prissy pants. I'll walk right in his office, look him right square in the eye, and I'll say, look here, you old... Oh, hello, Stanley. <laughs> oh, it's you, Ham. Yeah, it's me. <laughs> well, don't just stand there. Come in. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, Ham, you missed the weather reports this morning. Overslept again, didn't you? Well, yes. <laughs> you see, Stanley, I bought a new alarm clock, and it plays chimes. When I heard it this morning, I thought it was Sunday, so I went back to sleep. <laughs> Hemp, can't you think of a better excuse than that? Well, how do you like this one? The reason I was late... Never was... mind. <laughs> Hemp, I've come to a decision about you. Oh, here it comes. I've been thinking it over for a long time. Wonder what time the employment office opens. Hemp, I'm leaving town in about an hour. I'll be back tomorrow morning. But while I'm gone, I'll have to put you in charge of the station. Huh? Close your mouth. Yes, sir. Well, so I'm going to be in charge of the station. Yes, but only because there's no one else available. That's why I have to pick a bungler like you. Oop, I hate him. <laughs> well, don't you worry, Stanley. I'll make things hum. First, I'll go down and talk to my sponsor, Mr. Turner, at the mattress factory. I'll sell him another 15 minutes. Don't you dare talk to Mr. Turner. All oh. I want you to do is sit here in my office and answer the phone. Yeah. And remember, don't try to fill my shoes. There's only one Stanley Peabody. Yeah, that's one too many. <laughs> What's that, him? Eh? Huh? I said, say hello to your Aunt Ginny. Oh. <laughs> Have a nice trip, Stanley. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Gee, I just can't believe it. I'm in charge of the whole radio station, all 250 watts. I look like a real executive when I walk in. Fresh shaved carnation, this blue suit. It's kind of shiny in the back, but I'll be sitting down most of the time. Hey, I think I'll drop into Marshall's office and see Pete impressing with my new job. 
Well, hello, Pete, my good man. Oh, hello, Harry. Uh, Pete, you notice anything different about me? How's that? Take a good look at me. You got shaving soap in your ear, boy. <laughs> no, Pete, I'm all dressed up. I'm going to be in charge of the radio station today. I'm a big executive. Oh, I see. You're one of them typhoons. <laughs> I am not a typhoon. That's a big win. That's right. <laughs> Pete, I'm only kidding, boy. Uh, well, hello, Doc. Hello, Pete. Well, hello, you old horse doctor. <laughs> well, hello, crooner. Now, now, Doc, Harold ain't just a crooner now. He, he's manager of the radio station today. Oh, is that so, Harold? Yeah, that's right, Doc. I'm in complete charge down there. Mighty big responsibility, but I guess I can handle it. Complete charge, eh? Yeah. Well, I, I suppose you could even hire entertainers if you wanted to, huh? Oh, certainly. I know a wonderful act for you, Harold. Oh, who's that? Me and Pete. It, what? Yeah, we're a singing duo. Yeah. yeah, boy. We call ourselves the Three Andrews Sisters Minus One. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Come on, Max. Okay, Laverne. <laughs> I was walking with my darling Bullets! To the table Maxine, Robert! Oh, this old friend is leaving. Goodbye. Certainly going to be a busy day. Well, here's Stanley's office. Uh, what am I knocking for? It's my office now. Uh, well, might as well get behind the desk. Try Stanley's chair for size. Uh, 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 chair's very comfortable. Mm, it spins around, too. <laughs> Yeah, this is fun. Oop, I'm getting chair sick. <laughs> Wonder where Stanley keeps his cigars. Probably in this drawer here. Oh, yeah, here's the little box. Just open the lid, reach in. Oop, what's his note? Hemp, keep your sticky fingers out of my cigar. <laughs> what a sneaky thing to do. <laughs> Who's that? Come in. Hello, Theodora. Well, I hear you're a big executive today. Oh, yeah, I've been execing all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Theodora, how'd you like to be my secretary? Well, I don't know, Harold. I can't type very fast. Oh, that's all right. My speed's about ten kisses a minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Harold. How about taking a little dictation right now, huh? My, you look like a great big old lion behind that desk. I do? <laughs> it's too bad you're not station manager all the time. Yeah, it certainly is. That Peabody, he runs a station like a yogurt factory. <laughs> I bet you could run it much better, Curly Lashes. <laughs> <laughs> and I could, too. Take my program, for instance. It's an hour long and only 15 minutes of it is sponsored by Turner's Mattress Factory. I bet I could sell Mr. Turner the whole hour, but Peabody won't let me go near him. Why, Harold, you're not afraid of Stanley Peabody, are you? Mm, well... I thought you were a lion. You're the king of the jungle. I am? Say, you're right, Theodora. Why should I be afraid of Stanley? I'm going down and sell Turner right now. <laughs> Theodora. Harold, come... you're so masterful. Theodora, come here and sit on my knee. Yes, sir. Now kiss me. Yes, sir. <laughs> How did my big executive like that? You know, Theodora, I was made for this job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Theodora's right. I'll show Peabody how to handle this. It must be Mr. Turner's office at the end of the hall. There's a door on it. He'd be pretty thrilled to see me. After all, I'm the star of his radio program. Come in. Uh, Mr. Turner, I'm Honest Harold, the homemaker. <laughs> oh, how do you do, Mr. Homemaker? Yeah, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> my name is Hemp. You must know me. You sponsor part of my radio program. Radio program? Yeah. 
Yeah, you've been sponsoring me for five years. Oh, I do have a hazy recollection of that. Wow. He's hazy, all right. <laughs> How do you like my program? Well, I haven't listened to radio for a long time. What? Since my crystal set broke down. <laughs> oh, brother. My favorite radio orchestra is the A&P Gypsies. Yeah. They're going places. It's, they've already gone. <laughs> I haven't heard the street singer lately. What happened to him? I guess he's working another street. <laughs> oh, too bad. Yeah, Mr. Turner, I was just wondering if you wouldn't like to sponsor the entire hour of my program. Well, I don't know, Mr. Hemp. What kind of a program is it? Oh, it's really very good. I usually start it off with a funny joke. A joke? Oh, yeah, yeah, like this one. <laughs> now, here's a funny one. Must have been wonderful back in the gay 90s. Those were the horse and buggy days. Grandma drove the horse, and Grandpa drove her buggy. <laughs> <laughs> What else do you do? Yeah. <laughs> well, then I sing a little. Uh... Oh, I'm very glad you came in. Oh, that's all right. Glad to do it. Are you going to take the whole hour? No, I think I'll give you back your 15 minutes. <laughs> Mr. Turner, you're going to cancel my program? I'm sorry, Mr. Hemp, but I'm afraid as far as radio is concerned, I'm through. <laughs> so am I. Can I borrow one of your mattresses? I wonder where the A&P gypsies are camping tonight. <laughs> We'll return to the second act of our story, Honest Harold, in just a moment. Hey, what's all the excitement? The beautiful new Plymouth. It's coming to town Saturday, and it's got everybody talking. Matter of fact, it's even got some people singing. You're out in your Plymouth and rolling along. With safety for ride, you go rolling along. Rolling along. Rolling along your new You plane. can always drive on the beaten track A fact that may make you grumpy For the horrible truth is that once in a while You go to a road and bumpy Just see the bumps, they look like this But riding inside, nothing to miss For your plane that goes rolling along, rolling along With safety for ride, you go rolling along Rolling along Yes, riding inside the new Plymouth, those bumps and dips might just as well not exist. For thanks to Safety Flow Ride, your new Plymouth does go rolling along smoothly on all kinds of roads. And this spectacular engineering development is only one of many new features Plymouth is introducing. So mark your calendar, tie a string around your finger, tell someone to remind you anything. Just make sure you get into your Plymouth dealer Saturday to see the most exciting Plymouth ever built. Your Plymouth goes rolling along. And now, back to Honest Harold, the homemaker. Well, Honest Harold's career as manager of the radio station isn't turning out so well. In one morning, he has managed to lose the sponsor of his program, and he has practically lost his job. It's afternoon now, and we find our unhappy executive at home talking to his mother. Uh, uh, I'm through at the radio station, Mother. I might as well turn in my stopwatch. Now, son, if you are fired, we'll get along. Why, if necessary, I'll get a job. Yep. I understand there's an opening at the laundromat. Yep. Please. Mother, I will support our little family. Anyhow, Harold, you haven't been fired at the radio station yet. Maybe you can think up another program that Mr. Turner would like. No, Mother, it wouldn't work. I'm licked. Harold, a man isn't out until they've dragged him to his corner. Mother, you've been sneaking out to the prize fights? <laughs> no, but I saw one in a movie the other night. One of the fighters reminded me of you. Oh? He thought he was beaten, too. For nine rounds, he took an awful licking. Mm -hmm. A right to the chin. <coughs> a leg to the nose. Watch it, Mother. And then a smash to the stomach. <coughs> Zoink. I wish the bell would ring. But 
But in the tenth round, he came back. Oh? He lifted a uppercut from the floor and knocked his opponent out for a count of 15. Yeah. <laughs> Mother, that's ten. Oh. Oh, yes. <laughs> now, remember, Harold, it's never too late to come back. Maybe you're right, Mother. I will get another program for Turner. That's the spirit, son. And I'll be in your corner. Okay, Mother. I'll go out and win this fight. You bring the smelling salts. <laughs> What kind of a program would Turner like? Better get an idea pretty soon. I'm wearing out the floor in this office. Uh, let's see. Maybe a musical show would be good to advertise his mattress factory. We could call it Holiday for Springs. <laughs> no, I guess not. Let me see. Who's that? Come in. Howdy, boy. Pete. Hello, Ham. Oh, my God. Double trouble. What are you two fellas doing down here? Came down to save your job, boy. What? Your mother told us she was looking for a new radio program. We got just the thing for you. Oh, no. Yeah, it's a mystery program. A mystery program? Yep. And it's real scary. Oh. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> well, look, this is all very nice of you guys, but I'm busy. Oh, uh, we wrote it ourselves, Harold. But folks... Now, the first scene is an old English castle. Pete plays the part of an English lord. Kind of a high mucky muck. High mucky muck. Hi, Harold. Uh, <laughs> I'm supposed to be Lord Beaverbottom. Uh, Ain't that a doozy? <laughs> certainly is. And, and, and I play a sort of Jekyll and Hyde. Hyde at night. Yeah. But a hide in the daytime, too. <laughs> now, look, folks. And that show opens on a stormy night. Lord Beaverbottom is sitting in his castle. He... Well, go on, Pete. Oh, yeah. Uh, by Jove. It is a dark and stormy night by Jove. <laughs> what do you mean, Lord? By Jove, what was that? A noise uh, by Jove. <laughs> I declare I sound like Basil Rathbone. <laughs> That's what you think. Then, then I climb in the window. <laughs> I'm crazy, Harold. You said... <laughs> now, listen to me, both of you. I'm sorry, but your mystery program idea isn't what I'm looking for, fellas. Oh, well, we got another idea. What? A musical act. It features Arthur, my goat. What? Yeah, he's right outside. Call... Come on in, Arthur. Doc! Come on. Uh, that's it, Randy. And I'll say hello to Harold, Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> Doc, will you get that goat out of here? Oh, Harold, now you're gonna hurt his feelings. Oh, he didn't mean it, Arthur boy. He didn't mean it. <laughs> Ain't they cute together? Yeah. I'd better open a window. <clears throat> now, now you listen to this, Harold. The three of us are gonna sing The Thing. The Thing? Oh, no. <laughs> okay, boys. While I was walking down the beach one bright and sunny day, no, look, I, I saw a great big wooden box floating in the bay. Oops, I pulled it in and opened it up, and much to my surprise, oh, I discovered it right before my eyes. Oh, I discovered it right before my eyes. Oh, I wish I was in the thing with the box. <laughs> getting late. Almost time to go home. Still haven't got an idea. Let me see. What do they put in mattresses? Tufts. Say, maybe I could get sunny tufts. Oh, no. <laughs> Stanley will be back in the morning and I'll be looking for a new job. <laughs> oh, Harold. Yes, Gloria. Oh, Mr. Peabody's girlfriend is here. What? Miss Abigail Turner? Yes, yeah, she wants to know when Mr. Peabody's coming back. Do you want to talk to her? I certainly do not, Gloria. I got stuck with her and Stanley Peabody New Year's Eve in the Moose Room. All she did all night was sing, Oh, the music goes round and round. <laughs> Brother, what a voice. 
tell her I'm out. Oh, yes, sir. Well, she can't stay anyhow. She's on her way to see her uncle, Mr. Turner, at the mattress factory. Yeah, well, you just tell her to... Did you say Mr. Turner is her uncle, Gloria? Yes, sir. Well... <laughs> Gloria, I think I've got a great idea. I wonder how Miss Turner would like to sing on the radio. But, Harold, you just said she had a terrible voice. Yeah, but you just said Miss Turner was her uncle. <laughs> oh! My goodness, you got it. <laughs> Show her in, will you, Gloria? Yes, sir. Well, I can just talk her into this. I'm sure Mr. Turner wouldn't mind sponsoring his niece. Hello there, Mr. Hens. <laughs> Abigail, I haven't seen you since we had such a wonderful time at the New Year's Eve party, remember? Oh, yes. The music goes round and round. Oh. Oh. Only an uncle would sponsor a voice like that. <laughs> I'd like to put you on the radio. Me? Yeah. I think a voice like yours should be plugged. Um, <laughs> on the air, that is. <laughs> oh, you're just saying that. <laughs> no, I'm not. Why, with your uncle, uh, your talent, I could build a whole program around you. Oh, well, I couldn't sing on the radio. That microphone would scare me silly. <laughs> <laughs> Too late for that. <laughs> Abigail, I think you have great possibilities as a singer. Oh, you think I could be a chanteuse? I certainly do see. <laughs> In fact, Abigail, we could start your program this very night, 8 o'clock. We can cancel the horseshoe matches. Tonight? Mm -hmm. Oh, I couldn't tonight. I'm supposed to play canasta with my sister. Canasta? Well, won't your sister let you out of it? Well, I canasta. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. You asked her, will you? <laughs> Yeah, we'll make it tonight for sure. And just for the fun of it, why don't you ask your uncle, Mr. Turner, to listen in, huh? Tell him to fix his crystal sack. All right. You better come down about seven with your music. It's huh? all right. Oh, I'm going to be another Hildegard. Yeah. Oh. Paris in the spring. Tra -la, tra -la. Oh, I hate myself for doing this, but I've got to keep Mother out of the laundromat. <laughs> Yasha, will you please quiet down the orchestra? We're almost ready to go on the air. Thank you. Oh, where is Abigail? Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, there she is, spraying her throat. Uh -huh. Oop, listen to her. Just Mr. Turner like her. She's his niece, and blood is thicker than Sopranos. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Listen to that. Paris in the spring is going to sound like winter in Peoria. Maybe she won't sound so bad on Mr. Turner's crystal set. You'll think he's got a defective cat's whisker. <laughs> About time to go. Hello, Air. <laughs> Howdy, boy, by Joe. Um, what are you two fellas doing here in the studio? Well, we heard you were doing a program tonight. Just thought you might want to use us. No, fellas, I've got a program all set. Oh, sure, by Joe. Yeah. <laughs> Will you two please sit down over there and keep quiet? Oh, come on, Pete. If Harold doesn't appreciate our talent, all right for him. Uh, talent. Oop. Time for the program. Abigail? I'm coming. I'm coming. Oh, I feel so twittery. <laughs> Get your music ready, honey. It's almost 8 o'clock. Oh, yes, all right. Oh, um, what, is, is this the thing I sing into? No, that's the air conditioner, but it's a great idea. <laughs> the microphone is over there. Oh, here. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's a red light. Abigail, get ready. We're going on the air. Okay, hit it, Yasha. Ladies and gentlemen, in place of the horseshoe tournament usually broadcast at this time as a public service, radio station KHJP proudly presents a new program. No sponsor yet. <laughs> Songs by Mr. Turner's niece. I mean, Abigail Turner. Her first number will be Paris in the Spring. Okay, Abigail. Oh. <laughs> Paris in the Spring. Oh, I'm so nervous. <laughs> Start it over. Paris in the spring, tra la, tra la. I can't remember the next line. <laughs> Look at your music, okay, Yasha? Pa pa pa. Paris in the spring. <laughs> Doc brought his goat in here. He's coming up here, Arthur. Go away. <laughs> Get off the platform, you little ham. Paris in the spring. Oh, Arthur, let go of my music. 
music. Oh, he's eating my music. Oh, Arthur, cough up that music. Cough it up. Doc. What's the matter, Harry? Arthur just ate Paris in the spring. Oh. <laughs> Loves French food. <laughs> I can't go on. Don't you worry, Harold. Pete and I will save the day. What? Come on, Pete. Here, I'm ready, boy, by Joe. Oop. All right, Yasha. <laughs> the thing from the coda. Wait a minute. I pulled it in and opened it up, and much to my surprise, oh, I discovered it <laughs> right before my eyes. Oh, I'm going into television. <laughs> shambles the program turned out to be. Now I've lost Mr. Turner for good. I've lost my job for good, too. Just write Stanley a little farewell note and leave it here on his yogurt jar. <laughs> Tell him I've gone to New York to study Dianetics. <laughs> Oop. Wonder if that's the thing. Come in. Hello, Mr. Hemp. Oh, Mr. Turner, how do you do? I mean, goodbye. I heard Abigail sing tonight. You did? Well, I can explain everything. You see... Uh... Mr. Hemp, I've decided to sponsor your program again. Huh? On one condition. What's that? That you never let my niece sing on your station again. Yeah. <laughs> She's a nice girl, but after hearing her voice, nobody could sleep. Huh? And that's bad for the mattress business. <laughs> well, of course. I guess you got a point there, all right. <laughs> and by the way, Mr. Hemp, I rather enjoy that goat. Oh, Lord Arthur? Yes, <laughs> that goat has talent. Huh? He's got something inside. Yeah, Abigail sheet music. <laughs> He might sing a duet sometimes, like the like the Happiness Boys used to do. Happy. Remember when they used to sing Carolina in the morning? Hit it, Hemp. Hit it? Oh, oh yeah, oh sure. <clears throat> and nothing could be finer than to be in Carolina in the morning. Go into your dance, Turner. Oh, right. <laughs> and nothing could be sweeter than your sweetie when you meet her in the morning. <laughs> Say, this might bring back Christmas sex. Oh, in the morning, glory. Wine around the door. New outside. New inside. New ride. New Plymouth. That's the story at your Plymouth dealers this Saturday. The story of the most exciting Plymouth ever built. New outside. An all-new look from any angle. Wide, low, graceful hood and grill work. Flowing fender lines. Greater vision. New inside. Smart, new styling and color harmonies that spell limousine luxury. New ride. Sensational safety flow ride. The Plymouth engineering development that takes the bounce out of bumps and makes you a better, safer driver because you drive relaxed, free from tension. Yes, new outside, new inside, new ride. That's the new Plymouth. See it Saturday at your Plymouth dealers. You have just heard the Harold Perry Show, Honest Harold. The supporting players tonight included Olin Soleil, Parley Bear, Mari Alden, Ed Begley, Mary Jane Croft, and Jane Morgan. And featured Gloria Holliday as Gloria and Joseph Kearns as old Doc Yak Yak. And Jess Kirkpatrick, you know, as the little goat. Yes, Norman MacDonald directed and the music was composed and conducted by Jack Meekin. Honest Harold, created by Harold Perry, was written by Gene Stone, Jack Robinson, and Dick Powell. The Harold Perry Show has been brought to you by your Plymouth dealer. Remember, you have a date at his Plymouth showroom this Saturday to see the most exciting Plymouth ever built. Saturday is the day, Plymouth, the car. You're out in your Plymouth and rolling along. With safety flow ride, you go rolling along. Roy Rowan speaking for CBS, where you laugh at Jack Benny every Sunday night on the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.